What's up everybody, this is Jack from Crypto 49er, bringing you my knowledge in cryptocurrency. Today I want to show you guys how to debug Gecko Trading Bot using Visual Studio Code. I've shown you guys in the past how I use Visual Studio Code with my Gecko Trading Bot just because I found it easier to change any of the code and the strategies in Gecko just because of the highlighting, how everything looks on the industry real quickly again. You see everything's highlighted properly. You see that um, if you're missing a semicolon, for example, it'll tell you, it'll highlight it for you and say that you're doing something wrong in here so that you actually would be able to find these minor uh, issues beforehand. In addition to that, you can also set up the debug process where you actually can step-by-step -step troubleshoot a specific area um, where your gecko is running into issues. I'm gonna show you guys how to do that right now. So first thing is to open Visual Studio Code and from, from there you need to add the folder where you have Gecko installed. So go ahead and go to File, Add Folder to Workspace and from there find your Gecko folder. In this case I have a demo um, Gecko called Gecko-VS Code and in there I have the Gecko folder. So I just add that folder. I don't think you want to add the outside folder, you want to add the one that's exactly the level where Gecko is installed. So from there, you will, it will open up um, all the files within the Gecko folder in the workspace. You see all the files in here right on the left hand side in the file explorer. On the right hand side will show you the file that you're working on. And then what you want to do is go to debug and select open configurations. And once you do that, actually the environment that you want to debug in, I'm just going to debug using Node.js because that's what Gecko is set up in is actually uses Node.js. Node.js is basically JavaScript for servers. So it's like it's you, you're using JavaScript to run a server. And that's basically what Gecko is. It is a server application that lets you uh, interact with it in order to, to uh, trade. So anyway, after I select the Node.js, it'll open up this file, launch.json. So this is where you actually configure the settings on what file Visual Studio Code will run when you press the play button or the debug button to uh, start the debugging process. So open this file and you have to make some changes. And what it is is uh, I have this whole entire file in the description down below in this video. So you can just copy and paste. I might not be able to add it in the description section just because YouTube has certain re uh, restrictions on what you can add in the description field. So if it's not in the description section, there's really only one line, what well, two lines actually that you really have to change. This is the default file. So what you do is you just copy and paste that file. I mean, another thing is if you don't see on the YouTube description section, definitely go to the Steemit, my Steemit uh, post for this video. You definitely be able to pull from there. So in here, all I really did was on the program uh, line, I just added, I just changed it to gecko.js because originally it was just had dash dash UI. So I changed it to workspace folder slash gecko.js so that it'll call, um, it'll call gecko to start up gecko. And then I added this line here, args, which is for arguments. And you want to add the arguments in here. Basically the same thing you would do when you run gecko on command line. Or basically it's just like dash dash config and then you just want to type in the file that you are going to, your config file. So in my case here, I called my config file config dash paper trader. Your config file can be completely different. So definitely use your config file and not exactly this one here unless that's what you named your config file as. So after that, you want to make sure you save it. One other thing is there is this auto save feature in Visual Studio Code. I enabled it myself. That way that every little change I make, it will it'll just save it. It takes about a couple of seconds from uh, when you make a change to so it saves. But it's great. I don't have to save it. I mean, I still got in the habit of just saving stuff. but um, the autosave is a really good feature. So anyway, once you save the file, you also want to save the workspace. So you can click on file again and save workspace as. And then when you click on that, it'll just actually where you want to put the workspace file. This is where you actually will open the workspace. So you can open it from Visual Studio Code uh, you know, on the file open and click on uh, the workspace or you can just double click on the workspace and, it'll be, and you'll be able to open up the workspace in Visual Studio Code. So I just save it outside of the Gecko folder so that I can access it quickly. Wherever you save it, it doesn't really matter. I think it's best to keep it in or just one level outside of the of the folder that you're working with. So, but that's basically it. This is the whole setup process. It's very simple to do. 
So once you do that, now you're ready to debug using Visual Studio Code. From here, you can say debug and say start debugging. And it'll actually start running for you. So see, it actually changes the screen. It'll change it from the file explorer to the debug view. And then also bring up the debug console to show you all the things that's running. Similar to what you see in the terminal, basically almost exactly the same thing. There are some differences. Like for example, you actually don't see each line where uh, this information is coming from. So you'll see this information date, but you don't know which is uh, where it came from in terms of code wise. It'll tell you that this came from uh, log.js line 49. So these are the information that you get additional in addition to um, just the information that you would get from terminal. So that's, this is already a pretty good start to say. So if you if there's a, something that's causing an issue, you can, let's say that crashes after the, you know, this part of the line, whatever, then you just know where is it coming from. You could go and troubleshoot that. Another thing you could do is, I'm gonna stop it for now first. Uh, let's say that Gecko crashes after you see a particular line right here, right? So what you can do is put a breakpoint. A breakpoint is basically a way for you to pause the app. It's something that you can't do in terminal. You can't really pause the app and be able to see what's going on. So what you do here is you can click on the, the gutter, or the, what they call the gutter over here on the left-hand side of the file. And you see it has highlighted a little red. I'll click on it, and now you see a little red dot over there. So now I just set a breakpoint over here so that every single time Gecko runs into this line here, it's going to stop. And I'm going to show you that right now. So I'll run it again. And it stops right there because it's running this line. And it tells you this left hand side, you see the variables, and you see this the local variable. It says argument, it says setting up gecko. So, what I would see if is I, I press play right here, you'll see that it says setting up gecko. So, it tells you what it's actually doing. So, this is a really awesome way to see what it's doing. And in addition, if you want to dive deeper in, you can actually do these two things here. That there's a couple of step over, step into, and step out. So step over is just running the process. So you just go to the next step right here. So but whereas if you do, I think step in for example, it'll actually go into um, the file that actually is calling next. So it gets deeper and deeper until you actually find the problem. Uh, I think down to a certain point as it goes, it gets into machine code and it gets you know a little bit tricky to understand. So let me see here. We step into it. So it steps into the uh, different files and different portions. So it shows you what it's actually doing for each of the messages. So, but that's a very good way for you to troubleshoot and figure out what is wrong with your Gecko setup. So I'll stop for now. So one other thing you can do with Visual Studio Code is you can actually compare different files. So I'm gonna go back. I might close out this debug console over here. Go back to the File Explorer view, and then I'm just gonna close off Load Ash. I don't need that. All right, and also actually take out this breakpoint over here. So one way, to, so simply to take out the breakpoint just to click on the same spot and you'll take out the breakpoint. So you can compare two files to see what the differences are. This is great if you're making some modifications or if you have different config files you're working with, you'll make sure that uh, you're taking out other different changes or you want to add the different changes that you need to add. So in this case, I just want to show you guys I have two files open. I have the original sample config and I have the config dash paper trader that I just modified. I just want to see what the changes I made are. So you can go ahead and right click it and say select compare. And then I'll right click on config dash paper trader and say compare with selected. And that point on, it actually compares right down for you what the changes I have and it highlights it in red. So I usually just hide the file explorer and I'll be able to see what changes are. In this case, I only made one change because it's a demo purposes. I'm showing you that. I only made this change here from BTC to ETH, and that's basically it. There's nothing else I change in this file, but if I change a lot more stuff, you'll see a lot more red and a lot more blank spaces, perhaps, to show you what I deleted, perhaps. But that's basically it. This is what I do on a regular basis to troubleshoot and find problems that I have with the code on the Gecko Trading Bot. So that's the video for today, guys. Let me know what you guys think. Leave a comment down below. Like and subscribe. If it isn't crypto, it isn't worth mining, it isn't worth speculating. Peace out.